Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, General. Almost said good morning. We are oh, there, yes. We're there. Um, going to switch gears a little bit. I know we talked about education. Appreciate your remarks on that. Um, the, the issue I want to focus on is pensions. And um, we certainly have a statewide problem. But I, and as you're well aware, I am spent a lot of my time right. focusing on the municipal right. side. And I know you have some information concerning this. I wanted to talk with you about uh, in regard to the municipal pension system aid and whether you can describe the process by which uh, your office determines the amount of funding to, to be dispersed to municipalities and the source of such funds. That's for, I got a number of questions. That's the first one. Okay. Um, the so uh, first of all, every municipality in the state just about has a pension plan. Many of them have three. There's a couple that have four. They would be for fire, police, and non-uniform. There is, by our estimation, at least an $8 billion unfunded municipal pension liability from across Pennsylvania based on the work we've done in auditing all the municipal pension plans. Every, pardon me, every year, the state of Pennsylvania helps cities, boroughs, and townships make their annual pension payment. That amount is based on what is a relatively complex formula that is done by um, people that used to work at, at PERC. Now, obviously, there's a discussion about where to go from there. The calculations are done by the employees at PERC. We then get that information, and we disperse that aid to the cities, boroughs, and towns all over Pennsylvania to make it possible for them to make their annual pension payments. That can range in some cities, boroughs and towns, to close to 100% or anywhere from 15 to almost 100% of what their annual payment is. If that pension calculation is not done and the payments aren't able to be made, every municipal government ba budget right now is actually out of balance. That payment is made from what is known as a foreign insurance tax, um, which is not foreign governments, but any insurance premium sold in Pennsylvania by an out-of-state insurance carrier. And that was established in about 1984. Okay, let's follow up on PERC a little bit. With the, govern with the governor's an abolishment of PERC, Public Employee Retirement Commission, are you confident today that, municipal, that the municipal pension system aid payments will be made properly and on time as they have in prior years? I am hopeful, um, but there is a lot of work that would need to be done between now and then to figure out who would be doing the calculations, um, both in the short term and the long term. Um, so I'm hopeful that it can get done, but there's a lot of work to be done and some mechanics to figure out who would do it. Well, let me, and, and then just following up on that line of question, because I knew I do think it's a very serious situation. Right. I mean, it's something that I know we're going to have to address and is going to continue to be addressed even as we speak right. now. Is it true that if the municipalities don't make their minimum municipal obligation, which is known as the MMO payments, by mid-October, that the interest on that must be paid and the calculation needs to go back to the beginning of this year. Is that a true statement? How it works, the short answer is yes, but let me walk everyone through how this works. And I'm sure I'm gonna get some piece of paper thrown at me if this is not technically correct, but I, I believe this is gonna be the most accurate way to describe it. Cities, boroughs, and towns have a projected rate of return anywhere from four to nine percent. Now, for the record, I think allowing cities, boroughs, and towns to anticipate up to nine percent is, is crazy, but we'll move aside because they are technically allowed to do that right now. We're trying to move more of them to convince them to move at least closer down to the five, six range. Whatever, whenever they don't make their appropriate payment, the money that they are owe that they owe is based on their projected rate of return. So the interest that they have to pay is based on what their own anticipation. So one that is anticipating one or two percent would have a lower interest rate return payment as opposed for the money that, that they have to borrow to make the payment versus one that is at the higher end. So it's all over the map is what I'm getting at. So that would, but it would go back to the beginning of the year. Oh, correct. Yeah, that's that's correct. I just wanted to walk everyone through. Is it's not simple as to how much they owe. 
that's fine. I'm going to, one last question, and it kind of goes to the, to the municipal pension, the legislation. Your office has issued a number of reports on the status of municipal pension systems. And your report, which was a very good one, included eight recommendations to address the underfunding of municipal, right. municipal pension plans and four recommendations to address the systemic issues related to those plans. We talked about this last year. The House Republican Caucus, and I know I am, are willing to work with you on these issues, and, and we have been. But that being said, and going back to PERC, with the governor's abolishment of PERC, how can the General Assembly, how are we able to get an independent assessment of any proposed statutory changes, you know, to, so that we understand how to deal with the multitude of Pennsylvania, you know, municipal pension laws that we have? I mean, what, how are we going to move forward? I mean, right. like I said, we're kind of in an area, just as we are with the budget, that this is somewhat unique, and maybe you can provide some insight on that. What I have said both to the media and in interviews about this, what I'll say here, and what I would say to anybody that would ever want to talk to me about this anywhere, the work of PERC, regardless of who does it, whether it's PERC recreated, a line item veto is undone or there's new legislation. I'm not making a judgment on any of that. But the work they do on the calculations and the independent actuary work are critical for Pennsylvania. And the work must be independent. The last thing any elected official would want in voting on any type of pension legislation would be to be relying on numbers that had their thumb on the scale from one political party or one ideology. So any legislation that would move forward on municipal pensions, for example, you would want the actual area of work done to be independent of any political party. So that's why I've said the work needs to be done and it needs to be independent. Well, as a CPA who's done some auditing in the past, I couldn't agree with you more, and I'm glad that you stressed that and emphasized that. I will say that I appreciate your leadership on this issue. I know that, uh, like I said, I know the focus many times is on the statewide pension crisis. We do have a municipal crisis, and I know you're out front on that, and I uh, look forward to working with you on the future on that and appreciate you taking the time to be here today. Thank you. Thank you, Representative.